Hi, this video I want to go over my pick and place machine. Um, basically, I want to start um, recording uh, the progress I'm making here. Uh, this is actually my second version. The first one was a little bit awful because it was um, fully uh, printed uh, using uh, the 3D printer. Um, yeah, it had a um, couple of uh, accuracy issues, but this one is actually a lot much better. Um, so this is based on open builds acro. Uh, the head on the Z-axis is really meant for uh, for a laser, but I'm uh, gonna use my own uh, Z-axis that I got uh, from Amazon. But basically, uh, so you gotta make your things, uh, or you gotta make things on your own here. So that's uh, really the issue. Um, but the whole system basically has two cameras, one for the bottom, and there's also another one uh, that actually um, can see the bottom one. I believe this one is for the top vision. Uh, but yeah, this one that actually goes with the z-axis that moves around it detects small parts and also if you have Fiducial on your PCB um, the, the this particular camera should catch all these also I've got um, the uh, nozzle tips I believe this is um, Nemo something the motor is Nemo um, got a hollow shaft so that if you have a um, vacuum pump, you can actually um, uh, suck air or maybe blow air in it so that it can pick the part and then you can also let it go. Uh, this is my older Z-axis here. Um, you know, from my first experience, actually, I did not learn a lot because I still use 3D printed parts on uh, moving objects. Um, 3D printed parts are not actually bad, but uh, with, you know, especially if it moves around, but um, it's it's actually harder to make it stable, to, st to stabilize it. Uh, that's what I really realized. So this is actually my second attempt. Um, um, I believe it is possible if I still make many modification to this, I can make it uh, stable. Uh, it's it's actually, it's not that bad. Um, you know, the only issue I see is this thing actually moves a little bit. It's not, it's not too bad. Um, there's also a camera here it's for this guy here. But I eventually decided to go with something uh, uh, very stronger uh, that also stable when it moves. Um, another thing here, this actually can bend if you press on it. Um, I don't think it's going to be actually a big issue to be honest, but I just um, I don't like anything that actually moves, especially you know if this if this got the head because you really you want to make sure that the pick and place um is as accurate as possible all the time otherwise you really run into weird issues uh, in the middle of a job um so uh, my new approach or my z axis is um uh, it's much better because i like actually uh, the design of it because it's uh, much easier to uh, put things um, uh, for attachments. So here in this case, um, I'm using this. This is a 3D printer part that um, I'm going to use it to actually to push or to make a click for uh, the end end stops. I'm going to have two. So one at the bottom and the other should be at the top for the max um, level that the z-axis can go. There should be also another one. This is just a random replacement or a random placement. Um, but eventually I need to set up that in a level that uh, it works uh, well 
for um, the height level uh, on the machine. Also the same thing for the uh, bottom one. Um, here this is a, a reference push pole feeder. It's, um, uh, it works 100% mechanically, I mean using a mechanical uh, movement here. Uh, and no motors or any electric signals that goes uh, on onto this. Uh, this is uh, done by uh, a guy named Mark. Um, he's an active uh, contributor to uh, Open PNP. Uh, and basically, also this is the software uh, software that I'm uh, actually using to control this machine. Uh, so far, it's been great. I've been um, able to do anything actually I want. Uh, so. Um, I would keep posting updates on the uh, pick and place progress. If you're interested, I would encourage you to subscribe to see more of this content. Thank you.